Hey, what's going on guys? Today I wanted to do a review on the Alien Bees B800s. Before I jump into this review, I want to apologize. I'm having some equipment malfunctions. The audio hasn't wanted to record. I'm in this room, which is an extension to our house. It's like 106 degrees outside today. And because this room was an add-on, our air conditioner is underpowered. So it's hot. I've got my shop lights in here to try to light this because the room's dark and it's causing white balance of the issues, all kinds of stuff. So if I look like I'm sweaty and a little frustrated, that's probably why. So anyways, let's jump right into this. Uh, you know, I get asked by people from time to time what I think the most challenging thing in photography is. And I think it's lighting because photography is all about your light. And that applies to any kind of photographer, whether you're a landscape photographer, sports photographer, portraits, whatever the case may be. And it gets more confusing whenever you start adding the light to your scene. I think most photographers, especially for those of us who didn't formally go to school or necessarily have a mentor that taught us about photography, we kind of go through this progression in our photography where we start off and everything's all about natural light and then we buy our first speed light, we're shooting it on camera and we think we're really cool and then we realize that shooting on camera flash is not the best way to use it and we go to speed lights off camera and then eventually we make the jump into some studio lights like this. And for myself and uh, several other photographers I know, the hardest jump was when we went from speed lights to the studio lights. I, was, I know I was very reluctant. It seemed complicated, they were expensive, and there were a lot of reasons that I kept making excuses not to make the jump. And what's ironic about it is going from speed lights to these alien bees was ridiculously simple. I honestly think that using speed lights are way more complicated than something like these alien bees. These things are ridiculously easy to use. When you get it, it basically comes with two cords in the box. You've got your power cord and your sync cord. And I apologize, like I said, I had some technical issues and now everything's all jumbled up. But anyways, you got your power cord here which it'll plug into a standard outlet in your home or if you shoot a lot on, on location like I do, you're going to want something like this Vagabond uh, battery pack. You simply just plug your power pack in and then you have got your sync cable. Real quick, I just want to show you guys this. This is the Canon 5DS that just came out. I wasn't really expecting too much out of this thing, but I've had it for about two days now. This thing is amazing. I'm going to be doing a review here in about a week after I get some time actually using it, but it's really cool. But anyway, so you, you've got your sync cable that plugs into your camera, and then the other end just plugs in right there into the sync port, and you're ready to start shooting. It's that easy. Now, I don't recommend that you use the sync cable, and I'll show you guys some different options that you have later, but it's that easy. Once you got it plugged in, you just turn it on. I guess it would help if the Vagabond was on. You turn it on and to adjust your light output, you've got an analog slider there and that's pretty much it. You've got a few buttons back here, um, which mostly applies to your modeling lamp. You've got your test fire button. And as far as the modeling lamp goes, I, I don't really use the modeling lamp all that much, um, simply because I'm typically on a power supply like this and I don't want the the battery to go dead because of the modeling lamp. But that gives you the opportunity for what you see is what you get. So you can see your transitions from light to shadow with it. And you know, the way that I have it set right now is it tracks the power. So however much flash power it's gonna put out, the modeling lamp will adjust as well. And that way you can see what you're gonna get before you actually snap the picture. But it's really that easy. Once you've got everything set up, you just set up, boom, you take your picture and you're good to go and then you just make adjustments with the analog slider switch. It is ridiculously easy to use these. On the back of this you've also got an optical slave which I'll be honest with you if you shoot a lot outdoors it's pretty much pointless uh, because it's located in the back so let's say I know this is kind of this would not be a real setup you would use but if you've got a flash unit here and a flash unit here uh, just imagine they were spread out more outdoors it's going to be very difficult for this light to trigger this slave because it's the slave ports in the back. Uh, I have had very sporadic luck getting it to fire that way, which is why I typically use uh, radio triggers. Since I've brought it up twice, I guess I'll go ahead and talk about the ones that I use. Um, 
basically, I, I use the Young Nuo 603 C's with my Alien Bees. The C just denotes Canon. If you're shooting Nikon, it's going to be 603N. These things are like $30, I think, for two of them right now. Um, I've done a review of these in the past. I use these for a couple of reasons. One, they're cheap. Uh, two, I have a bunch of them, and they're just really easy to use. I have talked in the past about how I use Young Nuo speed lights, and some of my young, or one of my Young Nuo speed lights, anyways, the 5683, I think, is the model number. Uh, it has a built-in radio receiver, so I don't even have to have a trigger for this. And then this just plugs in the, into the sink port. And then I just put the other unit on top of my uh, camera and I'm good to go to fire this remotely. And I'll get into it more in a little bit, but I use these a lot with my in combination with my speed lights. The other option that you have is the kind of expensive but really cool Cyber Commander. Uh, the Cyber Commander gives you, this is also a Pulse Buff product, it gives you the ability to do things like control your flash output right from here instead of having to walk over, make changes. It is a little bit pricey. It's also got a cool little light meter on the back. Um, I don't have the radio receiver that goes onto the Alien Bees that is compatible with this. I have it right here. These are the Einsteins, and it takes a different radio receiver than the Alien Bees. Um, so as a result, I just use these Young Nuos because they're cheap and they're easy to use. So I'm not going to sit here and talk a lot about tech specs on this. I'm just going to talk to you guys about the real world use of these. I use these all the time, most of the time outdoors, on location kind of stuff. And the big complaint that I had heard about these before I bought them, and I have to agree with them, is the uh, durability issue with these. When you handle these as opposed to something like the Einsteins, these feel very, very cheap. And I had heard some other photographers on YouTube who had a lot of experience with different uh, studio lights and, you know, they complained that they didn't feel that these would hold up to the rigors of traveling and I have to agree with them. This unit right here is actually broken at the moment. I've got to send it back to Pulse Buff. All it did was it took about an 18 inch tumble. It was in a soft box and it was on a cart. We were moving it on a, a location shoot at a college for graduation and it landed on the softbox actually and it just barely grazed the side of this unit but now it powers on but it won't fire um, initially I thought it was just the flash tube which I'll show you guys that also uh, this is another one of the complaints that I have about these you can see here that when you take off your reflector and this is how you're going to put your modifiers on you've got your flash tube and you've got your uh, modeling lamp there well the problem is it, it can be a pain at times when you're putting stuff on and off to not bump that flash tube and that can be a very, very big problem. Um, if you look here at the Einsteins, pop this little dome off. They've got a plastic dome on here to protect your flash tube and it's very easy to bump those and crack one and I have done it in the past and it's really frustrating. I highly recommend that when you buy your lights that you order an extra flash tube because one of my big complaints with Pulse Buff is that for me every time I order something from them it takes two weeks for me to actually receive the product unless I pay extra and I'm not a big fan of paying extra. I'm a modern day American who demands to get stuff within two days in the mail like I do with my Amazon Prime and so I it's a little frustrating when you break one and you're stuck waiting two weeks to get a new flash tube so I highly recommend you order an extra one and I also recommend you order something like this Paul C. Buff bag um, to put your your lights in. If you're gonna drop several hundred dollars on lights spend a couple of bucks on a padded bag and don't do like I've seen some people who just stick them in a duffel bag or leave them in the trunk of their car. It's a relatively minor investment to protect your gear. But anyways, because of that, I, I don't really like this design and I think that it's prone to being broken. Um, now, I'm not saying these are a cheaply made unit. If you're good with your gear and you shoot, especially if you're shooting in a studio and you're not gonna be moving these around very much, you're gonna have no problem whatsoever for these. If you go on location a lot and you're good with your stuff, you're probably not gonna have a problem. But for me, I'm hard on my gear. I admit it, I abuse my stuff, and I just expect it to work. And so for me, it can be problematic. And I hire a lot of high school kids as assistants, and we all know high school kids are, well, they're not the brightest in the world. And 
you know, I'm sure that they kind of abuse stuff when they move it around for me from time to time. But just as a result, if you're going to be doing a lot of on-location stuff and you have concerns about durability, spend the extra money and go with something like an Einstein because it just is better built, in my opinion. So in terms of light output, now these are not the most powerful units out in the world, but I'll be honest with you, very, very rarely do I ever feel like I need more power. There's only been maybe two or three situations where I wasn't able to get enough light output from these. And most of the time, I'm not anywhere as close to using full power with these. Now, if you're considering buying something like the B400, you're probably going to regret it, especially if you're gonna use it as a main light, because you are gonna probably need more power on a lot of occasions. But even uh, with these B800s, even though they're not the most powerful in the world, I often find myself only using one light. So don't think you have to go out and buy two or three at a time like a lot of us photographers do. When we first order them, we go out and we drop something like $1,700, $1,800, $2,000 $2, buying gear from Paul C. Buff. If you're on a budget, you could probably get by with one of these. I use a reflector a lot uh, to fill in you know, the, the opposite side of where um, where I'm using this, or I, I use speed lights all the time. Um, I don't always have to use two large octaboxes or soft boxes or whatever the case may be. I can often just use one and something to fill in the shadows and I'm good to go. Typically, even for groups of up to seven or eight people, I'll use one light and I'll use my favorite light modifier, which is the seven, in, or seven foot parabolic uh, umbrella from Paul C. Buff, and I'll use that. I can light groups of up to seven or eight people with no problem, and I just absolutely love the quality of light, and I only have to use one of these. Now, if I'm gonna light a large group, I'm definitely going to use two of these. Um, and also, you know, there are situations where even if I'm shooting one person, I will use a couple of large light modifiers. Don't get me wrong, there are situations where you could use two of these even for portrait work, but it's not an absolute necessity. But all in all, I think for most people, they're gonna, these are gonna offer plenty of power. Unless you really plan on shooting a lot of large group situations, uh, these are probably gonna be enough. I've run into a few problems where I was trying to shoot groups of like 40 people, and on a bright day, it began to cause some issues with the light placement. I kept having to try to figure out a way to get it closer and all kinds of stuff. But outside of those kind of situations, which not a lot of people are going to be shooting large groups like that, uh, it's not really going to be a problem. So all in all, I think these are a great value for anybody who's wanting to jump into some nice, powerful studio lights. Like I said, there are some durability questions, uh, but if you're good with your stuff, you're, like I said, you're not gonna have a problem. So the light output is just fine. They do work, they're simple to use, incredibly easy to use, and they're nothing to be intimidated by, even if you don't have a lot of experience with lights. So hopefully that helps you guys out. If you guys have any questions, leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching, have a great day.